everybody, my name is Melissa Bender. Today I'm going to show you my post-run recovery stretching routine. So this is the routine I did after my half marathon along with some foam rolling and I'll post my foam rolling video link on my blog, benderfitness.com. So for the stretching, stretch number one, I'm gonna use a chair just to get a little added stretch or if you're not very flexible, it's a great way to build up flexibility. So you wanna stand fairly far away from your chair so when you bend over you can reach the back of it. Core pulls in tight, legs stay straight. Your butt is going to press backwards, so uh, like you would in a deadlift. Core tight, butt reaching back, you should feel that stretch in your hamstrings. And then reach for the chair and press through the shoulders and back, always still reaching back with the butt. Breathe here. And you can hold all of these stretches for as long as you want. Um, for maximum benefits, you should really hold it for at least a minute. But you can build up to that. So from here, we're going to go into the forward fold. So you can relax down or you can stand up all the way and then come into a forward fold. Either reach your hands toward the ground, nose toward your shins, or even stretch your hands out behind you a little bit. Sometimes it's nice to just grab your elbows, let your head relax. And again, the butt is still pressing back, stretching through the hamstrings. And breathing. From here, the next stretch is wide leg twists. So we're going to put our feet more than hip distance apart. We're going to keep our core tight again. And first, we're going to bring our nose and our chest toward the right foot. So reaching for that foot, chest toward the leg, both knees facing forward. Relax down a little further if you can. Then we're going to stay toward this foot, but we're going to switch the stretch a little bit. We're going to bring our chest forward. Arm is going to come up and then reach over. So you're putting your armpit toward your knee. So I'm just going to show the difference. Chest toward the knee, chest forward. It changes the dynamic of the stretch a little bit. Swing it over to the other leg. Again, chest toward your knee. Breathing the entire time. You're never gonna bounce in a stretch. Wherever you are is a good place to be. As you practice doing this, you'll get more and more flexible. And then turn that chest forward. Reach over. Relax to center and lift. Next, we're going to do pigeon pose. So, for this one, I'm going to move this away. You can start out in plank, or you can start out on all fours. If you start out on all fours, you're going to bring your knee forward, cross it, flex the foot, and then stretch this leg back behind you. If you come from plank, core tight, bring the knee forward, flex the foot, set it down. Try and drop, put your weight evenly through both hips. Find the balance, and then stretch up. Try 
try and hold this part for at least a good three or four breaths. Hands can come down, look up, stretch through the front of your abs, extending through the back. So you never want to crunch the low back. You want to lift through here. And then bring it forward. Feel a nice stretch in the outside of your hip. If you don't feel it through your IT band, through that outside of your leg, shift your weight into your hips a little bit more evenly. You might be leaning too much to one side. So then you're gonna come back. If you're able to, bend that back leg and grab it behind you. I will tell you, I did this immediately after my half marathon. When I did this reach back part, my hamstring cramped up. Keep hydrated. If you find that you're cramping up, you can switch up the stretches a little bit. So stretch and breathe. This is a nice quad stretch. We're going to do an alternate version. So if you can't get to that yet, it's okay. Other side, pigeon pose. Find that balance. Stretch through the front of your abs and lift. If you're tighter on one side than the other, that's okay. Stretch up through those abs, lift from the low back. Look at the ceiling. And then forward fold. Again, you should feel it on the outside of your hip and down the outside of the leg. If you don't change your hip position just a little bit, not a, not a lot, just try and feel a little stretch. And again, if you're able to bring that foot back, grab it behind you with one or both hands. Feel the stretch through the quad, so through the front of your thigh. Okay, now we're going to do King Arthur pose, which is another variation of that. What I just showed you, you're going to go to your wall. Um, so you're going to come on your knees. Bring your feet so they touch the wall. Then bring your right knee back first until your knee is against the wall, your shin is against the wall, toes are up the wall. Hands plant. <clears throat> and you're gonna come up. Come up slowly. If your quads and your hip flexors are really tight, you might not be able to lift all the way up at first. You might be here, wherever you are. It's okay, you're gonna build from there. So stretch, keeping that foot up against the wall. You can add the lift up, trying to reach the hands back to the wall if you're able to. And this is a really good quad and hip flexor stretch. Same thing on the other side. So come back to all fours. Bring the left knee back against the wall this time. <clears throat> right foot is going to work its way forward. Again, come up slowly, whatever your body is capable of. <sighs> Breathe here. And then if you're able to, again, stretching through the front of the abs, not crunching the low back. Arms can come up, shoulders relax down, 
stretch up. Come down. Now we're going to do knee to ground lunge. So you can start on your on your knees. Big step forward, keeping the knee behind the toes. Back knee can stay on the ground. You're going to push forward through the hips. Shoulders relax. Chest lifts toward the ceiling. So really push forward into the hips. And then from here, you're going to plant the toes into the ground. Spread out your toes like this and then push them into the ground and bring that forward knee back, hips back. So for this one, just like you do in a Romanian deadlift or in that very first bent over stretch we do, bring the hips back. You're gonna feel a stretch through your hamstring and then you're gonna feel it through your shin, which this front of the ankle and the shin is a hard area to stretch. But if you do this and push through it, you should feel it while you're pushing your toes into the ground. And bring it forward. And same thing on the other side. Knee stays behind the toes. Push forward through the hips. Stretch it up toward the ceiling. Feel a nice stretch through your hip flexor. And then again, pressing those hips back, pressing the toes into the ground and straightening out the knee. Come forward. Leaning as far as you're comfortably able to come while feeling the stretch. And I can feel it all through my shin right now. Next we have down dog. So again, if you can't do a down dog yet, you can do this with a chair or the wall. <clears throat> you're going to come into your plank pose, core tight, lift the hips, focus on flattening out that back. Once your back is nice and flat, hips are lifted, drop the heels down toward the ground. So the whole time you're in this pose, you're pressing through the hands, pressing down through the heels, and lifting through the hips at the same time. So every part of your body is actively engaged. Stretching. Bring those shoulder blades up into your back, pressing toward your tailbone. And I'm going to show you the modification for this. You can either, again, do it like we did at that first stretch, flatten out the back, press the hips back, heels down. And then as you grow more flexible, move to the lower portion. Okay, and finally, we're gonna do up dog. So you actually wanna to build to your up dog. You can lay on your stomach, tops of the toes are on the floor, core tight, hands right below your shoulders, elbows tucked at your sides. And again, stretching through the chest, so the chest is going to open forward and then up. And if this is enough, you can do this. It's a cobra. Or you can lift and press forward through the chest, stretching from the low back, not crunching it. And then pointing the chin toward the ceiling. Breathing. 
knees lifted. Okay, so that is it for my post run recovery stretch. This is the actual stretching routine I do. So I hope you guys like it. Have a great night. And I will see you tomorrow with a little bit more high intensity workout. So I'm feeling really well rested and recovered, but I wanted to give myself one more day of taking it easy before I jump back into it. So have a good night, guys. Remember, the breakdown for this and all of my workouts will be on my blog, BenderFitness.com. See you there.